Here I'll discuss the basic functions and features of Adobe Illustrator. For a more comprehensive guide, you might wish to consult in-depth Illustrator courses on Udemy. For now, I'll present the basics. You might know of them already, but it's definitely worth a recap, and I do suggest that you continue to watch. So here we have Illustrator in a blank canvas. The first thing I'd like to show you is the Square tool. Square tool is located in the Tools panel to the left. So if we click the left mouse button whilst holding Shift and we drag, we get a square. If we do the same without holding Shift, we can draw various sized rectangles. So that basically covers the essence of the square tool. Next, I'll go on to show you the selection tool and the direct selection tool. The selection tool is at the left hand side in your tools panel and it's shown as a black arrow. So if we select that and we select our square by clicking on it with the selection tool, you'll see that it highlights with blue border. Likewise, if we do it to the rectangle, it highlights with the blue border. If these two shapes happen to be grouped together, using the selection tool, these shapes would move together. However, using the direct selection tool, we're able to highlight and move each shape independently. This represents a difference between the selection tool and direct selection tool. As a summary, the selection tool moves all objects within their group together. The direct selection tool can manipulate objects independently, even if they happen to be grouped. Now, I'll go on to show you the line tool. Line tool is at the left, again, in the tools panel. Okay, basically the line tool does what it says on the tin, it draws a line. The colour of your line is here, the stroke colour. It's currently set to black, as you can see. If we select the line tool and hold down shift, we can drag across a horizontal, make a horizontal line, or holding shift again, we can drag upwards to draw a vertical line, or can drag between the midway of vertical and horizontal to draw a 45 degree line. And that covers the basics of the line tool. Next up is the polygon tool. To the left of the polygon tool here. If it isn't shown, click the same location on the little arrow in the bottom right hand corner and you should see all the shapes in a pop out. So select the polygon tool, hold and shift, keeps it in proportion, left mouse button and drag outwards. There we have the polygon. If we do the same again, drag outwards, left mouse button, hold and shift, and then we click the canvas, we get the polygon options including the radius and number of sides. So if we change the sides, for example, type in 5, there we'll have a pentagon. Do the same again, shift, left mouse button, drag outwards, click the canvas, type in 4, and this will give us a square, obviously. There we have it. Next is the ellipse tool. If we go to our square or polygon as it should be, and then we go to ellipse tool on the flyout. If we hold down shift, left mouse button, we can draw a perfect circle. If we do the same, but we leave out shift, we can draw an ellipse on the horizontal, or we can draw an ellipse on the vertical. And that covers the basics of the ellipse tool. Now for the star tool, if we click the shape tool 
and we select star. Clicking the left mouse button, we can draw a star as we drag outwards, and we can also rotate it. Releasing the left mouse button places that on the canvas. Holding shift does exactly the same, apart from it stops the star from rotating. Additional features for the star, including selection of the number of points. So we hold down the left mouse button again, drag outwards, and we click the canvas. Then we're presented with star options. As you can see, this one's set to 5. Let's try it with 10. Click OK. And here we're presented with a star that has 10 points. Let's try this again. Click outside the canvas. Now let's select 60 points. Click OK. Now you have a star with 60 points. This is what you might call a sunburst. And a sunburst is commonly used in a logo design as a backdrop to represent the sun or to give an appearance of highlighting. You may have noticed as we've been drawing the shapes, each has had a colour fill. In this case the colour is red and it features a black outline. You can see this on the left hand side below the tools. We have the fill colour red and the black outline called a stroke which is black. To change this from red to another colour, we'll highlight or rather select the shape and then we go to our swatches panel on the right hand side. We we'll select green as an example and our shape changes to green. If we wish to change the stroke, select the shape, we click on stroke which is beneath the fill colour to make that active and we we'll go over to our swatches, select the colour, for example blue and the shape stroke or outline as you might call it changes to blue. Selecting the shape again to remove the outline or stroke completely we go over to swatches and we select none. This is a little box with a red strike through a diagonal from corner to corner and it's located in the top left hand corner. Selecting that this removes the stroke or outline completely from the shape. So this concludes the basic shapes, selection and fill.